Hi everyone, welcome to the 10th webinar in 12D's Industry Solutions webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart, I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. While we wait for our guests to finish joining and get comfortable, I'll be launching a polling question. You'll have about 30 seconds to answer about your interest in 12DA library and storage basin hydraulics and then I'll show the results. Okay, it looks like most of us are interested in all of the above, but we've got some people more into storage basin hydraulics. I'm sure we'll all get a lot out of today's presentation. Our industry solutions webinars are designed to provide insights into overcoming challenges in an evolving industry in more effective and efficient ways. We'll keep running these webinars regularly and recording them for posting on our YouTube channel and website. Our first nine webinars from this Industry Solutions series, as well as the first five webinars from our training series, are available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter if there's time. Today's webinar on storage basin hydraulics using the 12DA library will be presented by Rob Graham, our resident water resources engineer, with almost 20 years of experience here at 12D and over 30 years of experience in the industry. Rob will discuss how the 12DA library is a perfect solution for creating and using a library of hydraulic control structures. This webinar will step through the hydraulic design stage of a storage basin using the 12DA library as a reference library for wear and culvert control structures. Rob will conclude with a closer look at the 12DA library and how users can create their own entries. Over to you, Rob. Great. Thank you, Lisa. In today's webinar presentation, we'll be looking at the storage basin hydraulics and how to use the 12DA library to quickly set up these hydraulic structures inside 12D. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the 12D library. 12D library, first of all, has a user-defined tree structure, which you can see in the image to the right. We're going to be looking at several different drainage components, well, one drainage component today, but you can see several of them out there on the right. It's easy to create your own components or entries. It's as easy as writing out a 12D ASCII file. At the end of the presentation, we will write out a 12D ASCII file to show you how to include that. When you do the import, on the right-hand side, there's options for translating and rotating your data models that are brought in. Finally, when you are using your 12D library, sometimes you may want to put extra information on the preview screen on the right. So that red cross you see there, you don't really want that brought into your project, but that insertion point is a good thing to have on that preview image. So anytime you want to have these extra images on, your, uh, on the right there, we just give them the name exclude from import, and they're not brought in when we bring in the project. So enough about the background. Let's take a look at how we can, first of all, take a copy of all of the 12DA uh, library entries that are shipped with 12D, and put them into our own user library so that we can start customizing that. I'm going to use a bit of a shortcut here. I'm going to use a 12D folder icon to get access to those two libraries. So I'm going to switch over to a 12D project now. It's a completely empty project. And the first thing I'm going to do is to copy the 12D library that shipped with 12D over to my user library. So moving up to the File button, down to Data Input, I'm going to use the 12D Archive panel just so that I can get access to this folder icon. What my plan is, is to go into the library that shipped with 12D, and then take a copy of that 12DA library. So I did a right mouse click, I'll just take a copy of that. Jump back out of there, and now I'm going to head into my user library. Now I already have a 12DA library folder here. If you didn't and you paste it in, it would go straight in. But because I'm planning on merging it, I'll say yes. And now it's gone and merged the 12D with my own entries. If we take a quick look at this, you'll see there's a bunch of subfolders. Those subfolders will create the tree structure inside the 12D library. So now for the background, let's close that now. And let's start taking a look at importing an entry from that library. I'll come up to File, down to Data Input, 
down to 12D, and I'm now going to use the 12D library. Because I've created that folder called 12D library inside my user lib area, I'm now looking at that area. Today, of course, we're going to be looking at drainage, so I'm going to expand the drainage tree. And the one I'm going to be using today is basins with Culvert and Weir version 2. This version 2 is going to be up on the 12D forum after this presentation if you want to download this updated version and try installing it yourself. So I'm going to select that item. And down here, I'm going to use the option to use the models from the file and also to use the position. And I'm going to try, to, first of all, I'm going to do this with and without. So first of all, when I hit the import button on here, it's going to read in the models inside that 12D ASCII file. And you can see that there's two that have been read in. One is my stormwater model, which is the 12DA basin. And the other one is the tin to go with it. Let's take a look at the basin. All right, we want to put away that 12D library for a moment. And now we're going to start to take a look at the basin hydraulics. I generally use the 12D toolbar for my 1D drainage. It's found underneath the 12D track. And I'm going to click, that, click on that first button for the drainage network editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this node in the very center called Basin. If I head across to the Pit tab, there's a sub-tab down here that says Basin. Having information, an elevation versus area curve, inside this grid is what makes this a Basin node. It, this elevation area data is going to be used during our analysis. We'll come back and take a look at it in more detail later. Let's take a look at this culvert that's going to be controlling our low flow outlets. If I come down here and I click on this folder, this um, culvert, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the pit tab and go to main. And you're going to see we've got the KU method set to a culvert. Now this has automatically been locked in through our drainage.4D file. And it's essential that you use this when you're looking at culvert hydraulics. Because when 12D analyzes of the hydraulics, it does the, the usual backwater calculations from the tailwater. But when we have it marked as a culvert, it also uses the inlet nomographs to check for inlet control and outlet control for that structure. If I drop down from my pit type, I'm going to select another one here that we have in the drainage.4D, which is just an HW, not marked in or out. That releases the lock on my KU method. So now if I come down, you'll see that we've got a selection of a wide variety of head wall configurations. Each one of those head wall configurations would have a different inlet nomograph, which is why you'd want to carefully choose the correct one for your head wall type. So that's our culvert that's going to be controlling the low flows. Of course, inside 12D, if we wanted to see what that looked like in section view, we could go profile that long section of the drainage pipe, and we'd see what we have here. So that's the culvert that we're currently working with. Let's go take a look at the weir. I'm going to pick here, and I'm going to select this outlet coming from the basin down towards the spillway. And I'm going to go back to my pipe tab. And down here, you'll notice that we've got a mode set, first of all, to basin. What happens is, is we've got an inlet pipe up here, and we've got two outlet structures, all of them connecting together to the center of a web uh, center of the basin looking like a bit of a spider's web. The idea is that when 12D does its analysis, we know that our users want to place the structures where they will be built. So if we've got our spillway in one location, our head wall exits somewhere, and our pipe coming in somewhere else, we need some way to connect all these together. And this is what we call a basin node. Now a basin node has no storage in the link itself. And it also has no hydraulic connectivity head losses. So essentially, the basin connects directly to these structures. Let's now move down a little bit, and let's go take a look at the spillway itself. When we're modeling a spillway, if we come back to our pipe main, you'll notice that the mode is set to a weir. If I go to the drop down there, you can see this: the many types of hydraulic structures that we can model inside 12D. We've got road weirs for overtopping roadways, often used for culvert crossings. The side weirs, we've got an orifice, a bottom orifice. This is where the flow goes out the bottom of a chamber. Uh, several different pipe types. And we also, 
If none of those above match what you want to do, we have depth discharge curves and head discharge curves that you can use. So that's a quick introduction into the different hydraulic structures that we're using here. Let's now move up to the, the inlet. Now generally this would be connected to a full hydraulic network, which we are going to do later. But for this uh, quick presentation, I just want to show you how we can put a catchment area on here and just analyze this simple basin. First of all, let's just jump across to our global tab and take a quick look at the hydrology methods that we're going to use. Back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation just for a moment. We've got several different hydrology methods that we're going to use. And because we're looking at a basin, um, we need to any method that has a hydrograph involved. So EPA SWIM, SCS, and Yilsax hydrology are the ones that we currently have inside 12D model. Yilsax hydrology, if you're not familiar with that, is a, a, a unit hydrograph method, a triangular unit hydrograph method, that's combined together with the Horton losses. We have several different Horton uh, loss methods inside our hydrology. You see we've got the Horton, the SCS, and the Green Amp equations. We also can use both design and historical storms. So the design storms are where the rainfall intensity would come off an IFD table, and historical storms would be, of course, observed past storms. If you are interested in seepage from the basin, we do employ the Green App equation as well for doing infiltration. Now back to the hydraulic side. We do solve the full St. Venant unsteady flow equations with the dynamic terms. When it comes time to do the uh, calculations, of course, we have all those hydraulic equations I just referred to, plus the user-defined curves. So now let's jump back to the 12D and see this run. So my idea, first of all, is if I go to my defaults tab for my catchments, 12D has the option to have three different land use types. Uh, in this example, set number one is going to be using for roadways, where we have about 90% impervious. Set number two would be used for lots. And the one I plan to use right now is set number three, which would be parklands. You see it's quite low and um, impervious. You have that down at 5%. So for this particular inlet, I'm going to come to my catchment area. And I'm going to mark that as one hectare. And let's go run the storm analysis on that. I'm using an IFD table from Brisbane, and I'm going to be running a 10-year storm. That determines the rainfall intensity that's going to be used. It's a 25-minute storm that I'm running, and I'm doing a single storm at this moment. And later, we're going to run a whole family of storm, of storm durations. Let's go back to the editor now that we've completed that run and take a look at what's been calculated. Most of our results are best viewed inside a graph. So if I go to our results tab and take a look at our set number three results that I've just put in, jumping back for a moment, I, my guess is I've just put that into the wrong set. Yes, I did, set number one. Well, let's take a look at that from set number one. So this is going to be from runoff as if that one hectare was on the roadway. So we're going to get very little losses because it was 90% impervious. If we come down and take a look at the flows, the flows would be up to 600 liters per second. If I was to do something different, I was to take that one hectare and take it across and move into set number three, where we have completely different hydrological parameters, and go rerun that, I'd expect to get far less inflow into my basin. So we'll go back to the editor. And if we go take a look at those results, head across to set number three this time, where I put the data, you'll see that we now have far less excess rainfall, greater losses as the difference between the two, and you'll see the flows have come down substantially. If I want to take a look at the inflows and the outflows from that basin, what I'm going to do is go select the center at the basin node, go back to my results, and I'm going to ask to see the elevation first of all. And you can see this basin started off at elevation 100. It only got to be just short of 300 mils deep, so 280, and then, of course, drained out at the end. More interesting for basin hydraulics would be to ask for my total inflow and outflow, where I would see, first of all, my inflow hydrograph, which, of course, came from that parkland, and my outflow hydrograph down here, which is primarily going through the culvert. My spillway 
has an invert elevation of 100.5, so currently it's not going across the spillway. If I ran a larger storm, it would. So what I've hoped I've showed you here is a very quick way to take a, to read in from the 12 Diaski, a hydraulic configuration and take a look at the results. Now this is just a fine small project, but now what I'd like to do is do the exact same process, but use a much larger model. The stormwater network I'm going to take a look at now is a much larger stormwater network, and I would like this stormwater network to come down into the stormwater detention basin that you see over here. If I come back in a plan view, this is what a stormwater detention basin looks like, and then in a 3D perspective view, of course you're going to be able to see a little bit easier exactly what that looks like. So I just back out a little bit on that. You'll see that what we have is the basin itself. We've got a sloping surface here, a bit of a dividing berm, which takes the lower flows around the edge, keeping this area dry, unless it's a major flow and water come over the top. So now what I want to do is to put those same structures into this stormwater basin. So moving across to the plan view over here, we're going to repeat that same process. This time I'm going to go to File again, down to Data Input, down to 12D, 12D Library. I'm going to once again return to my drainage and take a look at that basin with weirs. This time, however, I will, do not want to put it into a model by itself. I want this structure to be put in with my existing stormwater network that's already been designed. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick the location. I'm going to initially put that data down here into almost the center of the basin. And I'm also going to rotate, going to rotate it. And that's completely optional, about 20 degrees, just to spin it. As you'll see, this won't make a difference because we're going to align our structures anyway. Now the model I'm going to put it into is going to be my stormwater network up here. And then I'm going to hit the import button on that. We can finish that panel. And now you'll see that that same uh, basin configuration has been brought into this basin. So you can probably tell now that the hydraulic components are not in the right place. Quick and easy enough to do though inside 12D, I'm going to go to Strings, Points Edit, and use my Points Edit to reconfigure the location. So let's take a look at moving these to where we want them. First of all, the spillway. I'm going to grab the end of my spillway and put it down here so it's able to overtop my embankment for the high level flows and I'm going to grab the end of my culvert down here and put that down at this location where it can discharge off to the south. The other end, the upstream end of my culvert, I'll do the same thing with that. I'll bring that down and I'll just put that near the upstream end. Once again, the reason I'm placing these carefully or relatively carefully is so that when the, they're built, these this information will go to a co uh, contractor in the field and he's going to want to build these structures exactly where we've located them. The last thing I'd like to do is to take that inlet structure, pick that up, and I want to connect that to the stormwater network that's already been designed. That's going to require a point snap onto the end of the stormwater system, and now it's connected. So what we've done now is we've connected that to the, our existing system. Now, this existing system, of course, is going to have completely different levels for it, in order to adjust those levels, we're going to use the 12D Drainage Network Editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is go hit that button again for this Network Editor. I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick our stormwater basin again here at the center. Now this data that first came in, if we went back to the Pit tab and went over to the basin, that's going to be that raw data that was in the example. We're not really interested in that. I'm going to do a right mouse and clear that out because the information we want to use is from our stormwater detention basin that we see here. So we want the elevation area curve to be calculated for that. Also, we're going to need the levels of the structures to change. So the first thing I'm going to come down here to do is do a set fit details. The set fit details is going to recalculate all the elevations for our structures, and I'm going to do a regrade pipes, and that's going to reset the levels of our structures here and we'll take a look at those a little bit more in a moment. The last thing, of course, I mentioned earlier was that we want to recalculate the elevation area curve. To do that, I'll use the pick button. And I'm going to pick the polygon that's around the top of my basin. It defines the extent 
And you'll see what I've, we've done is we now have a curve, and if I do a set the details on that, what it does is these elevations are calculated from the base elevation of our basin, and now we have the elevation area curve. Now, if I do a right mouse click on this and maximize it, you'll see that this curve goes straight up near the end, so we've calculated a little bit higher than needed. I'd like it to tell 12D, look, as high as I need to go on this curve is 28.5. So I'll come back here and put a maximum elevation of 28.5 on that. And the next time I do a set the details, it will restrict the maximum elevation. 12D is going and calculating these areas on a 0.1 increment because that's what I've asked for up here. Now it's gone down to a little bit lower elevation than I need. You see there's hardly any area here at all. So these first four entries, I'm going to choose to delete them from the area curve. And so they don't get recalculated, I'm going to turn off that original string just for a moment. So the next time I do a set to details, it's going to preserve the data that's inside my grid. So what we've done there is we've quite quickly developed our elevation versus area curve for our stormwater basin. Now I want to take a look at our structures that we've brought in as well. So I'm going to go down now and take a look at the section view of our structures. Now our structures have been set so that they will float on the surface of the tin and in this particular case there's this extra berm down here at the end which is causing my structure to be a little bit lower than I need it to be. In order to control that level one of the options we used is during our design we set a cover limit of minus one indicating that this basin link and I'll talk about that more in a moment is okay to have it above the ground. I'm going to change that to be minus two. So now if I go regrade the pipe, what happens is this basin link that I've shown will now come up and sit exactly onto the basin. Let's take a look at our culvert now. This downstream end of the culvert, I would really much rather if that came down here and sat on near the DTM and discharged down here. Now in this case, I'm going to show you how we can do some inputs. So I'm going to go to my pipe tab go to the main, and I'm going to go lock my downstream invert, and then go choose it from the DTM. So I'm going to go to at point, pick a Z value, and come down here and select the level from the DTM that I'd like to use. You'll notice it's filled that in, so the next time I hit the apply button, I now have that coming down to my DTM level. A set bit details will always recalculate the required data for our structures, and now you'll notice that it's brought that cover level down so it lines up with my culvert. The weir itself, we've already got that set to be floating at half a meter above the basin, so it's already set ready to go. So let's take a look at running this now. If we go to a storm analysis, I haven't put any, cul any areas in because it's going to be using the flows that come in from the stormwater network that was upstream. When I come down and I select the run button, the dynamic engine is going to start to run, and this uh, time we've asked for a suite of design storms to be run. We've run the 25 minute intensity, we've also run a 60 minute, and we've run a 90 minute storm as well. So they're all running simultaneously on the different cores of my computer, and as they finish up you'll see each one of those graphs close. There. Let's update our results. If we go back to our stormwater editor now, I could return to the basin node that we were looking at previously. The first thing I'd like to do is to investigate what kind of elevations have, hap have resulted from the inflows. I'll head over to my results tab. I'm going to come down and I'm going to ask for all of my design storms that I've run, and I'd like to see the elevations. So it's run through these three storms. The one in bold here, the 90 minute storm, gave me the maximum elevation. I wouldn't be very confident that this was the maximum storm, so if this was my design, I'd probably go add a 120 or 180 minute design storm as well to make sure that they did not give larger elevations. But for the moment, it's the 90 minute that I'm currently interested in, so I'm going to close that, 
And I'm going to ask for more details just about the 90-minute storm. And what I'm going to be looking for is the, once again, the total inflows and outflows. So what we're now looking at here is we've got our inflow hydrograph that's come from our stormwater network upstream. And we've, that's our inflow and our outflow hydrograph. The maximum depth on this so far, our elevation, if you can see, we've gone up to an elevation of 27.8. So um, our spillway is set to be half a meter above the base, so it's not quite going to be discharging yet. So what I've hoped to be able to do in just a short time that we have is just to go through and show you the basics of what's involved in setting up these basin hydraulics using the 12DA library. Now obviously there's a whole lot about hydraulics that we haven't spoken about and we, in our time frame of approximately 25 minutes, I think we've given a good brief introduction to how this can be done inside 12D. The very last step that I'd like to do is to return and talk about how exactly you create a 12D library entry. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to return, for, well first of all let's go back to our, um, back to our PowerPoint presentation. And what I'm going to do is, in our other model, I'm going to make sure that all of my data is put onto a single view that I want to create all the data that I'd like to be in my 12DA library entry. And then I'm just going to simply write out a 12D ASCII file. So if I go back and return to that original job that we were looking at, if I go to the minus button right now, I just have my basin on there. If I wanted to include the tin as well, I could go add on that tin. So now those are all the models that I would like to put into my 12DA library. That's a very straightforward process to do this. I'm going to go down to File, go down to Data Output, 12D, and I'm going to write a 12D ASCII file. I'm not going to do a single model. I'm going to ask for a few models. So I'll change that to my view, and the view I'm looking at is view number one. In version 11, we're not going to write that out in a zip file format. We're going to write it in standard ASCII format. The file location where I'd like to put it. I'm going to head to my user library, which is where I've set up my 12DA library. I'm going to put it into my drainage folder, and I'll select one that's already there, and just for this example. But because I'm updating, I might just change that V2 to a V3. Of course, I would be welcome to overwrite the old one if I wanted to, but I'd like to keep the different version numbers, and I'm going to write that out. So having just simply written out a 12D ASCII file, I can come back up to my file, come down to my data input, 12DA, 12DA library, and if I return to my drainage, I would now see that I have my drainage V3 sitting there in my 12DA library. Now it's up to your imagination to what type of information you store inside your 12DA library. Anytime you create a component or something that you want to use over and over, the 12DA library is the place to use it. It's also a very good way for 12D to put out information. Um, in our case, it was a stormwater basin with the hydraulic structures ready to go so that our users can try them out quickly for themselves. So that concludes what I wanted to show you today with our, uh, our webinar series. Uh, hopefully, it's been informative for you. And so we might open up the floor right now to some questions if there are any. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I think we've got time just for one question today. Um, Dave from Brisbane has said, the example that you showed had only an inflow to the basin. Is it possible to have more? Uh, good question. The, the example that I showed, if I jump back to here, uh, I tried to keep it fairly simple, but to let everyone know that definitely we have the capability to have at least two outlets. This basin here, where I've set it up like a spider web, I can have as many incoming and outgoing lines from the center of this basin if I wanted. So if there was another inlet structure coming over here, I would just repeat this basin link here. And the same thing's true for the outlets. Although I just have one culvert across here and one spillway, I'd be more than welcome to have additional outlets from that as well. So uh, we only show in two outlets and one inlet to keep the example simple but it's up to you to say how many you put in there. So Dave, I hope that was, answers your question there. Thank you, Rob. 
That's all we've got time for in the live Q&A today. Sorry to anyone whose questions we couldn't get to live, but we'll answer you individually afterwards. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two industry solutions webinars will be Document Transmittals on the 6th of July and 12D International Conference Wrap-Up on the 10th of August. We've also got some more great training webinar topics coming up from next week, so do see our website for details of all of those. We'll keep updating it with many more topics in coming weeks and also keep you posted through email and social media. And don't forget, we've also got our next 12D International Conference this July. So if you haven't registered for that, now is the time, especially if you require an invoice for this financial year. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details will be on the screen shortly. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.